Hello and welcome to this Inline Academy session on baselines. My name is Greg Parkani. To start off, let's define what a baseline is. To explain that, we need to take a step back and talk about the way CodeBeamer stores work items. Let's say we have a requirement R1. It could be a test case, a user story, or any other type. But let's stay with requirements for now. You can create it by specifying the minimum required data, usually summary and description. As you add additional information, like type, an updated status, a custom field, these incremental changes will be added on top of the original, creating a new version of the work item with every change. So you reach version 4. At the same time, you may have another requirement, R2, that has the mandatory fields and one change on top. And R3, with more changes, currently on version 6. At that point, we fire a baseline. When we do so, we essentially store the timestamp of the given moment, and this allows us to roll back changes made afterwards. Keep in mind, baselines are always read-only. The three types of baselines are project baseline, tracker baseline, and document baseline. Let me show you how to create each one. A project baseline contains the information of all trackers in a given project. I navigate to the baselines tab and hit the new baseline link in the top left corner. Let's call it training1 and sign it with my username and secret password. A tracker baseline will only store the current version of work items in a given tracker, for example the customer requirements. We can create it directly from the More menu by choosing the Create Baseline option. Let's give it a descriptive name and hit OK. Document baselines can be created from the Document Management module. Select the folder and choose the relevant option, Create Baseline, from the More menu. The usual window pops up, where I specify a good name, optionally provide a description and signature. We'll tie the creation of baseline to a status change in the release, which is generally a good idea. This way we make sure we won't forget it at the end of an important project phase or scrum sprint. I navigate to the configuration of the release tracker, then state transitions, and select the arrow that connects the status active with finished. I'm going to add a new action, new project baseline. Notice I could use the same menu to create a tracker baseline as well. The name and description of the baseline will be copied from the respective fields of the release tracker. Let's save the configuration change and try it out. Let's navigate to the dashboard view of the release tracker. I'm going right ahead and start the definition phase. And then immediately finish and save. We'll find the new baseline with the description definition where all the others are, second one from the top. In the following demonstration, I'll send the baseline version of my customer requirements for approval in the review hub. Navigate to the review hub and hit the plus to create a new review. The name is Training Review 1, and I'm going to select the current project and customer requirement tracker. Notice how I could select multiple trackers as well, changed items only. This is especially useful if the baseline has already been approved and I just want to focus on the modifications made ever since. Hit the next link in the corner and next again. Specify a deadline and next again. Finally, create review. The huge yellow highlighter on the electrical engine and the suspension emphasizes the fact that there have been changes to the item since the baseline. To do it, I just navigate over to the Baselines tab and hit the Before Baseline link. As I navigate around, for example, hit the Custom Requirement Tracker, it displays as of the moment when the baseline was created. I want you to notice all work items are read-only. The Edit button is simply missing. Let's go back to Baselines. Select Baseline to compare. I want to compare the Before Baseline with the Training 1 Baseline here. Compare selected baselines. Then we get a neat, systematic analysis of changes. Nine trackers have changed. Let's take a look at the differences in the Customer Requirements tracker. We get a list of changed items and an expandable section with the details of the modifications. This comparison is available on all types of baselines. Let's add a filter that shows the items in the status accepted. 
There's only one in the current moment. I want to add a historical view to show me the number of accepted items as of the moment when the before baseline was created. There were three work items in accepted status back then. The historical filter may also be saved into a private or public view. The same functionality exists on reports as well. I navigate to the reports tab and start editing Greg's customer requirement report. Same as in the view, pick historical view and select the baseline from the drop down menu. I get the same three accepted items that we saw earlier. The electrical engine requirement is currently on version 7. At the time of creating the before baseline, it was on version 5. Let's add an association using the before baseline. Hit add association. Select the association type depends on. Baseline before. Select the electrical engine requirement from history. Hit add. Notice the status of the work item is accepted as it was in version 5 and not draft as it is now. Furthermore, we can see an indication to the historical association if we navigate to the item detail view and zoom in on the associations. A gray version 5 tag is displayed right next to the description text. References can also be based on baselines, but for the creation of such, we need to be on the downstream item. Let's open up system requirements and take a look at the weight transfer one. It is, as you can see, connected to the electrical engine customer requirement with an upstream reference, established via the customer requirement field. Click the field to start editing and use the drop-down triangle right next to the description to select a baseline version. I will pick the before baseline and so I immediately get a gray version 5 label as a reminder. 